We're going to answer this entire question using the law of conservation of mechanical energy. What do I mean by that? The total mechanical energy in an isolated system is conserved. The total mechanical energy in an isolated system is conserved. That is to say that the initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy in the absence of external forces. Mechanical energy is conserved. But what is mechanical energy? That is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. Let's see how this can help us answer this question. Let's look at 5.1. Define the term gravitational potential energy. The formula says the mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the height. But what does the definition actually say? It is the energy of an object as a result of its position above the surface of the earth. The energy of an object as a result of its position above the surface of the earth. Moving to 5.2. Prove with calculations that the mechanical energy of the cut at point A is 588 joules the mechanical energy of the cut at point A. So that will be equals to the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. We have already said that the potential energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height. And then the kinetic on the other hand is half mass velocity squared. So what is the mass of the object? That is two kgs. Gravity, the gravitational acceleration, uh, that is a constant 9.8 multiplied by a height. So at point A, we have a height of 30 meters. So we're going to have 30 right here plus a half. The mass is 2 kgs. And now we have to worry about the velocity. So if you go through a question statement, you're going to realize that uh, a roller coaster cut of mass 2 kg is a release from rest at point A. So at point A, it is a release from rest. That tells us that the initial velocity is zero. So we have zero squared. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get 588 joules. So the mechanical energy at point A is 588 joules. But if there's no friction from A to C, then we expect the mechanical energy to be 588 joules at any point because the total mechanical energy of an isolated system remains constant, is conserved. That's what we mean by that. And then 5.3, state the law of conservation of mechanical energy in words. Uh, we've already done that. So let's just go ahead and do 5.4. 5.4, calculate the velocity of the cut when it is at point B. Now we want the velocity at this point. We want the velocity at point B. What are we going to use? The law of conservation of mechanical energy. So the mechanical energy at point A should be equal to the mechanical energy at point B because it is conserved. At point A, we already know what the mechanical energy is. We calculated it in 5.2. It is actually 588 joules. But what about the mechanical energy at point B? We're going to have the mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height plus a half mv squared. The mass of the object, it is still 2 kgs multiplied by the gravity 9.8 but then the height is changed it is no longer 30 meters but 10 meters so we're gonna have 10 meters that is the height at point b plus a half the mass is two cages what are we looking for we're looking for the velocity at point b initially the velocity was zero but as our object is going down some of that potential energy is getting converted to kinetic energy so the velocity of the object actually increases right let's carry on so we're gonna have 588 being equals to 196 plus v squared if we take 196 to the other side we're going to get 392 being equals to v squared. We're going to take square roots on both sides to get a velocity of 19.8 meters per second at point B. Let's look at 5.5. 5.5 5. 
5.5 is saying how will the mechanical energy of the cut at point C compare with the mechanical energy of the cut at point B, right? Only greater than, less than, or equal to. Give a reason for your answer. We know that the answer will be equal to. Why are we saying that? The law of conservation of mechanical energy.